You're tuned in to Just One Hot Mom with host Nanika Ansari. Get ready. She's about to bring you that fire, that flavor, that heat, all that passion, and more from around the world and in your neighborhood. Stay tuned. That's so cool. Hey, <laughs> Hotties, you are tuned. <laughs> hey, Hotties, you are tuned in to Just One Hot Mom. I am your host, Nanika, and sorry, and I'm in the studio. Let me tell y'all, these, they are old enough to be my own baby. So <laughs> I ain't even mad at them. They, I just, I'm so happy that somebody thinks this is super dope. You know, like, <laughs> we are, t- you know, we are live in Cleveland, Ohio, and it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Y'all, you know what? Uh, as we end out this year, I don't know what we're gonna say about this weather, but it's always a beautiful. day because you woke up this morning. Yes. I want to give a shout out to Moan's Meals. You know Simone. Woo, and she woo. is the hottest kid and she is currently doing mm. meal prep. So if you need your meal prep, go ahead on over to Instagram and watch Moan's Meals. That's M-O-N-E-S M-E-A-L-S. We're going to get into this. If you guys would like to call in and have questions, the number is 440-252-0518. That's 440-252-0518. In the studio, I have with me two lovely young ladies. I have beautiful, beautiful, Be beautiful. <laughs> it's Abria, and she gonna have to keep pronouncing her name for me. <laughs> Saida. Saida. Mm-hmm. And we are gonna talk about encouraging and empowering our young women going into the new season. Hey, ladies. Hello. Hey. How are you this evening? We're great. Are you? So let me tell you. First of all, you guys are extremely super dope. I know y'all already know that. I know I'm sure y'all already heard. It. <laughs> but they making I me blush. Love to follow you guys and to see how you are pouring into our young ladies in our community. So can you guys tell the people a little bit about what Beautiful Cle is? Okay, so Be Beautiful Cleveland is a nonprofit based in Cleveland where we transform, empower, and enlighten 10 through 10 through 18 year olds through sisterhood. So we have after school programs at rec centers, um, community centers, and we also give classes throughout days um, at schools. Yeah. Okay, and so the way the way we met though is because I sat on the would have known panel with Abria, yeah. and I was just yes. so super like caught up in like her answers and the way she was giving back to the young ladies when they came through with questions. So you got to hear her perspective, then you got to hear my perspective, and that's what we're supposed to do is to pour back into the young ladies in our community. And I'm you guys are just doing an amazing job <laughs> with that. Like I'm so excited. So why did you feel the need to start this movement in your community? Mm. It was necessary. <laughs> we take it back. <laughs> yeah, it was really necessary. I mean, it actually started our senior year in high school. And what's so powerful is that now we're seniors in college. Yeah. So we always make it known at every event that we do that we're students along with our girls. They're all in school. Um, and it's a shared experience. It's not us completely leading anything is pretty much like we're looking for guidance to you and to other women that are our mentors in the community and we really just it's like a garden like we're and we'll talk about that we have a curriculum it's it's (laughs) fly too (laughs) but um essentially we just want to grow and make our community into what it should be for young women um to give them that guidance and that love that i feel like we missed because we didn't have big sisters Mm -hmm. to look to look to so yeah and missing that component though like as you guys went through high school and stuff what was it like not to have that and what do you hope that the girls are taking away from you guys you get in a whole lot of trouble you get in (laughs) a whole lot of trouble that can be completely avoided so we both had our grandmothers and our mothers in our lives but there's such a distance and such a gap with that age right because as a kid you're like well how long ago were you a teenager right (laughs) and how much information am I really absorbing from you and how related do I feel to you even though you're my parent but it's still that there's no friendship there you know like Mm -hmm. that barrier is still up but having a big sister is what we tried to step in to do when we were seniors in high school because we're like we have this information from making it through these four years and even before that where we can help the girls avoid making avoidable mistakes pretty much. 
So did you guys see this a lot in high school? Girls making mistakes that could have been avoided had they had someone. I don't even want to say a peer. Like if they had a mentor to talk to. It's not even just them. We made mistakes too that I feel like could have totally been avoided if we had um, a big sister. Yeah. That safe zone, that yes. safe space, which is what we strive to create in every interaction that we have, not even just with our girls, but just people in general, just striving to create that safe space where people feel comfortable enough to to be themselves. Yes. Um, yeah. And so speaking of the parent in the home, what do you think that parents are lacking in homes that are not creating those safe space <coughs> for um, the young people, for young girls? Um... They're lacking monitoring. So oh, that's a good one. Social media is something that we combat in our program. So mm-hmm. girls can't use their phones. They can't be on social media when they're participating with us so that we... Oh, you're powerful. Oh, no, you yes. Stop somebody from using their <laughs> yes. phone. Oh, yeah. You yes. don't play that. No games played. Um, but parents let their children have social media so instagram and these things where they really have access to everything that exists in the world right Mm -hmm. you're 10 and you have access to everything that exists in the world and the parents are not stepping in like you can only use your phone at this certain time you can't do this there's no parent blocks like parents are really lacking that monitoring right where it's not like so much exercising unnecessary authority but where it's guiding softly or gently where the Mm -hmm. kid is still getting what they need and they're still getting that firmness but not being able to run wild we didn't have iphones when we were in third grade no (laughs) like first of all let's put that out there (laughs) and even with having these phones that these kids are so excited about parents do not realize like saida mentioned that it gives them access to a world that they have not been prepared for and that they really do not need to be in. You can't, and even as a parent, if you do monitor an Instagram page, you can only monitor what your child puts up. Right. What about what everybody else put up? What about all the toxic stuff that other people put up? You cannot, you can't stop that. This explore page. I didn't sign up to see half of the things that I see all the (laughs) time. So I think that yeah like it's just it gives them too much access so we do we monitor yeah. that we don't play that yeah oh, so what makes the girls respect you there like what are you guys <laughs> doing that make them respect you that at home they're just like I'm on my phone I'm gonna be reckless not that they're reckless yeah. intentionally yeah. but you know unintentionally reckless what makes the girls respect you guys so much because we create that environment for them mm-hmm. so from the very first day we make a contract with each other so what do you expect of me what do I expect of you? How do we make this work, right? Because we're entering a relationship. I'm your big sister now, right? And you're my little sister. And you're going to teach me things, and I'm going to teach you things. And I will never disrespect you, so you shouldn't return that to me. And they yeah. really respect. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. look at this. Are we talking to some grown women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some grown women in this. No, I respect that because all too often people don't realize what it is to enter into a contract for somebody to be committed to you. So yes. you guys are really showing what commitment is mm-hmm. on a different level so that they'll approach that and expect that later on in yes. life. Okay, so going back to the social media and your curriculum, though. Mm-hmm. So what is it that, what part of your curriculum is teaching them that what you see on social media isn't necessarily what should feed your confidence? Mm. Removing the weeds. Removing the weeds. Come on now. <laughs> That's what it's called. Removing, removing the weeds. Oh, yes. I like that. So, All right, pluck them. Yeah. <laughs> so our curriculum is, is completely centered around our girls being seeds and flowers in a garden. Oh. We're all flowers in a garden. And in order for us to grow to be our best and most beautiful self, we have to remove every piece of toxic energy that could be destroying or having any sort of impact on our growth in order for us to be our best self. So we have an entire curriculum that's all about removing those weeds. So toxic relationships um, with friends, um, things that you see online, on social media, all sorts of things are goes into that of removing the weed. And see, I know some adults that probably need to take mm-hmm. it. <laughs> we invite you yeah. every Friday. But when you have a young lady who sees this stuff on social media and I don't look like what people think I should look like, I don't act how people think I should act, how are you combating that with your curriculum? So that is a part of, what is it, maybe quarter one, quarter three? Oh, they real school, Mm -hmm. (laughs) y'all. 
water. For real. This is serious. Is there a graduation? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. There is. Yes. There is a graduation. Coming. graduation. So in one of the quarters, it's basically, who do you want to be? Right? Mm-hmm. What exactly do you want to be? Forget about everything that you see. Just think organically about what you want to be and who you want to be. Right? So we have them do that. And then we have them write it down. So it's something like guiding them through a vision board. Mm -hmm. And then we help them find the solution to making that real, right? So really just emphasizing, moving them away from all the things that they see and focusing them on their own thoughts and their own attention where they can really focus on themselves. But do you find that social media has made that hard? Because I know even as a parent, you know, they see kids like, oh, I see kids traveling and, you know, they have all these toys like YouTube. I was like so mad at YouTube. Like my daughter sees like 50 billion kids playing with all these different toys. Now she thinks like she can develop her own toy. And I'm sure she can. But (laughs) like every day she's watching, like, I want to be more and more like these people. And I'm like, okay, but you can just be you too. Do you think social media has caused that great divide and made it harder for people, for mentors to uh, re- help people realize that it's okay yes, to see you. Of course. Yes, it. Uh, see, <laughs> <laughs> it makes me like literally. It, it, it's really frustrating because we pour our all into the yeah. girls that we work with and we love them like so much i mean yes. report cards on our refrigerators <laughs> like yes. pictures trips calls to dinner like all, all sorts of things yeah. um and it's really frustrating because we can't be like all right social media you can't exist anymore yeah so i guess it's really about teaching our girls that quarter one yeah. um planting the seed and m- helping them to fall in love with themselves and who they are and what they offer to the world, what they bring to the table. What has been your feedback from parents? They love us. <laughs> they do. They trust us. And and it's a That's beautiful a thing. thing. Trust. Yeah. They trust because us. For somebody to hand their kid over for you to say, yes. like, I'm going to plant a seed in your kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, because we see after school programs all the time. And sometimes mm-hmm. they're not all that they're cracked up to be. Yeah. They just want to receive funding. Yeah. Or, they, you know, and so we see these programs and they're not necessarily pouring into people. Or you only pour into, like, athletes, student yeah. athletes or students who you feel will be able to. Give a return. Uh, yeah. Give, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can tell. Give you a return. Yeah, so yeah. for a parent to find someone like you guys yeah. is amazing. Do you guys have a cap on the number of girls you can take in? Nope. Mm-mm. So y'all just go. Come on. Every y'all have. We I need, need, need it. This. It's just us two. Oh, see. Anybody okay. want to volunteer, we are completely open to yeah. it. You have got to be excited about two young ladies in the community who are on fire for encouraging and inspire other young women. Y'all, if whoever can hear the sound of my voice, whoever <laughs> is watching, we have got to back them up. If you've got a daughter around that got age that's in college or stuff like that, send her over to yes. help them. They need some help. Yes. Like I can tell because, you know, I work with the youth group Young Lives, and so we're always like, we always need yes. help. Like, you always need volunteers. You need mentors and stuff like that. And for you guys to take on this under taking of pouring into these yeah. girls that's a lot how many girls do you guys have man <laughs> i mean <laughs> sheesh i don't know yeah i can our Pretty friday good. group is definitely maybe 20 regular girls for our friday group and then we you have, have the schools that yeah. we go to on a regular basis the events that we have it's not a closed off type of thing yeah. okay. so we really don't call ourselves like an organization because to me organization like when you hear that you think about structure yeah. and because we're students along with our girls there is no like well you can't come in now yeah. because you know we already started it's like no we want to give you what what's in us yes. what, whatever we can give you you know we want to give now how has this impacted you guys as students had did it influence like what career choices you're making or what do you guys plan on doing once because you're about to graduate i know yeah, yeah. okay i'm like yeah. i met with both of them Woo! <laughs> congratulations thank you yeah. <laughs> how has this impacted we'll you guys as students? <laughs> how has it impacted you well I'm in school to be a math teacher, right? So teaching is just something I love, especially now since we've been um, really putting forth this movement for the past four years. That's really influenced me to want to learn about psychology and child psychology so that we can work better with the girls and really give them concrete things, Mm -hmm. um, right? Um, But it's also made me very focused in school, like 
college sucks. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's college a lot. sucks. It really does. And it's not for everybody. It's really not. But having the girls looking up to us is like, let's give them an example of what they can do. And that's right. everything. Mm-hmm. When, when you have, oh my God, it's almost like a war. Like, we're fighting a battle with social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, like, scream so loudly about the power of representation. And if you can see us, where we live, where you live. Like, if in the yes. hood. Like, <laughs> we literally live exactly where y'all live, but you can see what we're doing. Yeah. So you know that it's not out of reach for you. Yeah. Because we're from exactly where you're from. But now you're not only fighting with social media, you bring up a good the point. We're fighting with the environment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. around us because people, you, if I'm out in the street and I see some girl that's got some little outfit and she's getting attention, oh, yeah. I want that attention. How are you guys combat- combating what's going on in your neighborhoods? Mm. You just gotta be loud, like <laughs> for real, <laughs> because it's 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 hard. And and you know what? Also, not being afraid to speak up, even if you don't know yeah. that girl yeah. or that guy. Like we teach our girls to not touch doors. Yeah. Like when we go out, if we at a gas station or at a store, <laughs> I thought I was the only person. That no, <laughs> no, we tell we tell them like stand back. If yeah. if there's a man walking up to the door. I, we just stand back and if they don't know it's not demeaning to you but I'm teaching you as your sister in the community that this is what you're supposed to do yeah well that's a powerful one because I know some old men old men they be the door swing they be the worst yeah. one <laughs> like the door swing don't do that mm-hmm. hit you so. mm-hmm. I'm gonna start calling people I'm gonna tap you up you went to stop <laughs> me on your shoulder like I know you hosting. just saw us standing right here yes. so how <laughs> has though how has like society changing and women decided like hey so women going outside of the home to work so not being there on that nurturing part of it um moms now decide i'm going to live my best life now and i'm going to live my dream how has that impacted what you guys do because if mom is living her dream she may not necessarily be nurturing your dream at home or watching you at home to know what you got going on because now we're, i'm trying to show you like mom's trying to be the mentor now to show you how to do things but mom you've had your time now it's yeah. my time how has that impacted the girls that you work with well that's why we're here and this girls some of our girls are actually watching hey lady um, <laughs> <laughs> um but that's a that's a tough one that's really a tough one there was actually an activity that we did um where the girls wrote letters to their parents about why they're grateful for them and i'm like y'all keep those like keep the letters you know and give them to your parent and one girl literally i kid you not she literally said like my mom is just gonna throw this away like give it to her for what like you take it <laughs> Yeah. And you see, know, I always talk about on here. Like, I feel like my generation, because I can say that they went to school with, with my daughter. So I say, <laughs> my generation, we missed the boat on some of the pieces of telling you guys, like, this is how you do stuff. This is how you handle stuff. So I'm glad to see that you guys are missing the boat for the next generation, yeah. pouring into them and teaching them. All right, now, how are you handling them when it's time for them to go back and give in the community? Do you guys have an option for them to? Yeah. 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 That, that's that math teacher yeah. in a show. Oh, I feel sorry for the child. Class and they forget their homework. Oh yeah, we we actually that's our quarter. Quarter four is the bloom. Yes. Um, what are you now taking into the world that's around you, and just letting them know it's really not an option. Yeah. Like you actually have a responsibility to serve those that are around you. Yeah. Now I'm gonna flip it on you because you sat on the would have known panel. What would you have liked to know growing up before you started this group? What were some of the questions that you would have had to ask the generation before you? What would you have liked to know? Um, that I'm capable of doing what I'm doing. Oh, that is a good one. All right, don't hype me up now. (laughs) No, but seriously, like, I feel like societal norms and the pressure that's put on for you to not only go to college but to be something or someone that already exists Mm. and when I was young it's almost like to me every girl goes through this phase where they want to become a pediatrician Mm -hmm. I know I want to be a pediatrician Mm -hmm. it's like until I got into medical school and I was like 
was like, ooh, <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna <laughs> be like this. Say, like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Shout out to anybody who completes medical school, but I was like, this is boring. Like mm-hmm. my adult ADHD kicked in real fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but so you wish that we would have told you that you were capable of doing this, and so that's what you guys are doing for these girls. Mm-hmm. But you brought up something earlier about how college isn't for everybody. Can yeah. you tell parents why? Because I think sometimes we just beat it in your head. Go to school. Go to school. If you don't go to school, you won't get a good job. Well, why do you think college isn't for everybody? I think, first of all, okay, let me not get too deep on here, right? <laughs> but college is a construct, of course, right? It wasn't built for us anyway. So why would we think that we need to go? I forgot I knew your family. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them twin. was go-go. Tell them twin. <laughs> so why do we feel like we need to go? And I feel like our parents specifically beat it into our heads because we've been locked out of it for so long, mm-hmm. right? We've been told that we can't go. So the first chance that we got to go, you have to go mm-hmm. because it's something that's been taken away, right? It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Mm-hmm. But when you get there... You're like, okay, like, I was a star in high school, right? I was an absolute star. Mm -hmm. Getting to college, it took me a long time to find myself again, right? Mm -hmm. And to really understand what I should be studying. I went to college to be a pharmacist because I thought I was going to make a lot of money. Not because I was good at science, because I wasn't, right? (laughs) (laughs) Not because I could understand any of it, but just because I thought I could make a lot of money and I could take care of my family. Because that's my goal, right? Is to take care of those who are around me, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But once I got there, I'm meeting other kids and I'm meeting mentors, right, that are telling me that I don't have to do something that already exists, right? Like, I'm going to school to be a math teacher, but we also run a nonprofit. But I'm also a photography teacher, but I also do a million other things, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be stuck in the box. And it's not meant for everybody because everyone cannot uncrack that box once you get to college. Some people get to college and get stuck. Right, mm-hmm. people take out a lot of money. People That's fool cool. around. Then you be in debt for yes. the rest of your life. You can't explain why you can't get a job yes. in the area that you went for school. Yes, see, y'all, I'm I'm speaking from experience because I work at a college. Yes, and oftentimes I see some of the kids there who just never get it. Like they yes. never get it. They never catch on to it. And parents come to the campus and they are so proud to be walking around the yes. campus. And the kid just looks like I oh, hate it here. Yes, and I was like for a long time when I told my own daughter, I was like, it's up to you yeah. because eventually you take the reins to your own life Mm -hmm. you're going to take the reins you're going to have to lead it all i can do is guide you Mm -hmm. and say hey this is what you might want to do you could do this or you could do that but ultimately at the end of the day it's your it's your life and so when you make a decision for your life you Mm -hmm. have to live with that decision so what are your girls looking at when they look at college or are you talking to them about looking at college yeah so most of our girls are right now in elementary school um so as old as eighth grade right now our regular group Mm -hmm. And right now, we're just getting them to understand who they are and what they enjoy, right? So we have one girl who wants to work um, as a doula, right? So we're putting work in to find her a it's place like, to shadow. How do you even learn with that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> we have some. Yes. That's so amazing. But you know, that's because the kids have the internet. They do. And yeah. like you, but you never know who you might connect them with that that may become their job. They may own a whole company full yes. of and send doulas out. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know that lady. <laughs> I do. So we're we're just asking them what they enjoy first, right? Because college is always an option, right? It's always somewhere you can go, get a degree, and find a job. Right? And they can shadow us, too. Yeah. I, I had a girl um, that was really interested into John Carroll University, which is where I go. Yeah, and John <laughs> Halfway, I'm run up out of there. Um, what was I saying? She shadowed you. Oh yeah, she was really interested in a John Carroll um and shadow, and so we we give yeah. them that you know and just uh, but again college isn't for everyone. Just letting people know you don't have to go. Yeah. Um, and what's so crazy is that when I first got into John Carroll, I'm like. I want a business degree. I want to go to the business school because I'm a black woman and I want to own a business. <laughs> <laughs> and was you know, such conviction. I'm like. so serious. And not only was I like that, but I found that most of the other African American um, female students at John Carroll felt the same exact way. And once I wasn't excelling the way I thought that I could, I kind of had to reevaluate myself. Why do I have to be in the in the business business school to be a successful black woman i 
already on a nonprofit. <laughs> Somebody is falling behind. <laughs> because, you know, and then just reevaluating, like, why do we, because we're from the hood and feel like in order for us to make it out, because mm-hmm. we want to make it out so people can look to us like we really something yeah. because we have a business degree. Yeah. What? It's, it's, it's you only have to wear that and tell it to people because they won't know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won't know it. And that's the thing, though. As many times as you could tell people that you have a degree or that you know something, yeah. uh, people, unless you can prove it in action, yeah. people won't believe it. And you guys are proving it in action mm-hmm. by working with these young ladies because what will happen is we like to say, we say it's reaching two generations for Christ. So you pour into them, but they're taking that home. Mm-hmm. And despite the fact that you don't see everything that's going on at home, mm-hmm. they're pouring it into other people. Yeah. And then just think about it, they're pouring it in. So yeah. you're actually like trickling all around the city when you think of it on that magnitude how does that make you feel it's amazing and to see it is even more amazing so we have our regular group at zelma george in our hood right on fridays and we have girls bring a plus one almost every week like i have to bring my sister so so she can see this i have to go tell somebody in the rec to come and sit in here with us so that we can talk during our expos every may we have like trolls of girls coming just from one girl telling everybody at her it's church. It's powerful. Yeah. It is powerful because mm-hmm. once somebody learns that I can think outside the box, that I found a space that I can be comfortable and be myself and I don't have to be like everybody else. I don't have to be this drone yeah. that will watch our world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like they say when you when a woman cuts her hair, she about to change the game. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize that once you plant a seed mm-hmm. in someone and they catch that fire and it's watered and nurtured, that's going to change the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as you guys are going throughout your community how are you funding this i didn't even ask that question. i'm like i need to know now so we are blessed <laughs> in all honesty we have been so blessed we've been so blessed yeah the very first year that we had an expo That's all our own money all of our own money well y'all two college students took your own money <laughs> Say that again. Let everybody know. Money. Let everybody know. Yeah. Like the refund checks funded your whole expo. No. You didn't even use your Not refund Not the refund. Check. Our, like, we work, work study jobs. That funded the first, the first two expos. That funded. I worked at funded. Hollister. Honey. <laughs> like. I'm just looking at them. Just imagine. College, you know, you hear college students like, we're struggling, I have to eat top ramen, or I have to figure out how to do all this stuff, but for you guys to take your money collectively, yeah. and mm-hmm. so how big was the expo? It was small, it but was it was small. huge. But it made a huge impact. It had a huge impact. Mm-hmm. I can't even, there is no way that in 2015, when we had our very first one, that I could imagine that it would have been as large mm-hmm. as it has been the past two years. The YMCA partnered with us. Yeah. Okay, now. We yes. went from having our expo at, at a high, high school, school. <laughs> at a high school to a college. Yeah. In four years. Yeah. In the fourth year, yes. we're seniors. It's actually really powerful, like how it all worked out. But I never would have imagined, I never would have imagined it to be, to have grown so fast. But I yeah. think when you guys see it, when you take your own money and mm-hmm. you pour it into something, you want it to be a certain type of, of way. Course. You're like, I did mm-hmm. not spend this $5. Yes. And you're <laughs> yes. like this. So when you take your own money and you plant your own money into what you believe yes. in, you tend to treat it a certain type yes. of way. And this is your baby. So as yes. it's developing, you're watching it grow. Yes. And then it'll come to a point where somebody else will come in and pour into your baby. Yeah. So when you're in your community, you're going out, how has this impacted other women around you. I'm not talking about your girls. Mm-hmm. Have you seen this impact other women your age or older? Yes. yes. Yeah. There are some women at um, Zelma George who actually sat in, was that last week or the week That's before? Two weeks, ago. two weeks ago. They're always there when we're there, but for the first time they actually sat in and they were just like, wow. <laughs> like, this is amazing. I never knew it was yeah. like this. And, and actually really, really loved it and contributed to it really contributed to it yeah. and see i know when i met so i met you two separately on two separate occasions i didn't even know they worked together <laughs> it's the twins i met aria at uh the would have known event but mm-hmm. then when i met say your name again saida saida Sasa. Sasa. No. <laughs> Sister no. Sasa. Call her that too. Saida. I met Saida at the Keep Her Warm event. Yes. And so we were in there crocheting together and she's just talking. I'm like, this is what I'm at. 
And that's why I didn't finish my scarf. Like, that's where my baby hat because she was in there distracting me. <laughs> because she was so full of life and what I meant. Like, so then when I saw them together, I said, oh, that makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that you two would partner together. Yes. Work together. But how is that to partner with your best friend? Like, that means y'all have to do almost she everything. She be on my. <laughs> man. We keep each other together. This space. my sister. Yes. No, this is all. <laughs> Honestly. Well, she keep me together. Yeah. It's. <laughs> it's <laughs> Hold on. Who's keeping who together? They trying to get on their social media. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> Our girls is trying to watch us. <laughs> yeah, this so was I, a part I, of their I homework. That, right. So that, they didn't gave an assignment. That's that teacher in you. But I respect the fact that you guys are making sure that they can hear and that they can see what you guys are doing because you never know. Like this could be another thing that they may want to mentor that they may want to feed into. Yeah. So, but let's go back to you guys pouring into the older women. So mm-hmm. you're out in your community and you see these older women. How are what are their responses to you? Not the ladies, just the majority, but out in the community. Okay, so I love lifts. <laughs> I have a habit. I really do. A lift habit. I have a habit but I will talk to anybody about anything so I'll sit in my lift and a lot of the times yes I don't drive I get in the back (laughs) (laughs) but so um a lot of the times you'll have conversations with people but you have to be receptive to what they're trying to give you right Mm -hmm. so I have conversations with women all around the city about what we do And I will have women like, give me your business card so I can send my daughter to you. Or give me your business card so I can come to your events. Or so I can volunteer. Or I can tell more people about you. Um, It's really just about networking and really getting your name out there um, so that people can feel the impact, basically. right? Because our demographic is 10 through 18 year old girls, right? And we got some younger than that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but like the <laughs> closest. <said. laughs> yes. Yeah, she can come. We've had a girl. She was she was three, three years old. See, she's grown with us. Start early. She's yes. six now. You gotta yes. start early, letting them know that this is out there and available yes. to them, and that that they that they matter and that they're important. Yes. I think that that's one thing we have to start pouring into our girls, especially our girls in the African American movie. Mm-hmm. That you matter. You matter to us. You matter to the world. Yes. Like you are going to be a game changer. You are going to make a difference. Yes. Hey, Robin. You were, Oh, yes, I'm sorry, you guys. We We're going to take a short break, hotties. I'm going to help them set up their uh, <laughs> uh, social media so that their girls can do their homework assignment. Yes. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Woo! Hotties, welcome back. You are tuned into Just One Hot Mom. I am your host, Nanika and Sorry, and we are on with beautiful Khalid. Beautiful. Put the expression on you. Yes. Abria and Saeed. Saida. Saida. See, I'm getting it together. <laughs> I have a hard name, too, so I just be like, Kee. But um, we're on and we're talking about their nonprofit, which is pouring into encouraging, empowering, inspiring young ladies in our community. So, did you guys think, like, so if we were to think five years ahead yeah, for what this is supposed to look like, is this just supposed to be in Cleveland, or are we taking this? Where are we taking this? We place? already in Ghana. Come oh. on now. <laughs> no. So, when you went to Ghana, did you really start? What was that like? So all she do is network. <laughs> that's right. Twin B, out here. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm about to get. Hold on. We got to get her in the camera. Okay. So when you went to Ghana, yes. what was that like for you to be in Ghana and to like experience the girls over there? What was that like? I need to know. Black girls need each other everywhere we go, right? So no matter where we go, little black girls are not getting the information that they need from older black girls. So that's their parents. That's their sisters. It goes on and on and on. So while I was there, I was teaching math after school. And I would just be talking to the girls, and they would be so happy and excited. They have all this energy, but they're not really putting it forth in many places, right? They're not growing themselves or growing their family. They're just being an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And every site that we go to, so it's not just going to be in Ghana. It's not just going to be in Cleveland. It's going to be all over the world. It's tailored specifically to what those girls need in that community. Mm -hmm. Super dope. When you think about it, what was the the biggest difference you noticed from Cleveland to Ghana and when it came to um, inspiring the girls? What did you notice the difference? So in the community that I was in, they don't have any social media, right? So that wasn't something to combat, right? (laughs) (laughs) Need to go there. Yes. (laughs) So that wasn't something to combat, but um, I guess you would say 
like the patriarchy would be something to combat there. So not so much trying to change their culture because that's not what we try to do, right? Mm -hmm. We try to really have the girls embrace what their culture is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But to just let the girls understand what their role is and how they can maximize their position where they are, right? So... I'm so proud of you. Like, yeah. what she said, God, I totally thought she was just joking around. <laughs> no, I'm no, playing for games. Really? So, what's, no what games. are your next areas that you would like to go to? Because I have one that you should go to, but I want to know what you We ready. Do. I want to, let's go to New Orleans. I'll okay. go with y'all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what other, so, what's next on your list? Like, for 2019 is coming up. What are the next areas you want to hit? And how do you keep growing it here in Cleveland? Yeah. So, right now, we're working on government funding. Since we, that's right. Yes, Make honey. Work, honey. Make <laughs> so, our big thing is that all of our things are free so the expos that we talk about are free um we have an event called bragging rights that happens every september for high school students that's also free we have special events on fridays by invite only (laughs) that's also (laughs) free um but all of it we're trying to charge the system for it right Mm -hmm. so that they can put out what they haven't been putting out right um so that's 2019 it's really just making big plans to get funding um consistent funding because a lot of the stuff that we do sometimes we do get help right so we get private help from companies and businesses but a lot of it we still fund by ourselves and we are going into our fifth year right so i'm going to ask you guys this do you think that it would be impossible for you guys to ask i mean possible for you guys to ask the parents what makes you think the parents want to invest we don't want to do that. Yeah. We and want somebody else to pay for it. And that's the whole thing with charging the system. Seriously. No, like, I get it. Because I feel like they, just like we have a responsibility to do what they're doing, they also have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Just like, so if we go into a school, you know, um, like a school invites us there, like, you're going to pay us. Yeah. Because we're providing a service to you for the girls. The girls aren't going to pay. They need it. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is what they deserve. Yes. So you're going to fund it. Yeah. Like, I like, you know what? I'm going to take her a ride with me. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I'm going to be like, you need to pay me because I deserve it. Yes. Here are the reasons why. Yes. But no, I like the fact that you guys have a lot of confidence in what you do. And you're like, hey, this is our plan of action. This is what we're going to do. And you're going to pay us. Yes. And it's going to be the way we yes. want it to be. Mm-hmm. Because I, sometimes I think often when we allow other people to pay for it, that's yeah. why I asked about the parents making yeah. the investment. They want to take over over and say well this is the way it should yeah. be but I like the fact that you guys have a tailored plan a curriculum yes. that says this is what we're going to teach this is what they're going to learn so what has your outcome been nobody's graduated yet have they well yeah we have you for graduation we have so what is that person doing now? I'm always curious to see what they do after the program so we have a few girls that have transitioned into college um, so we have one she in Connecticut Massachusetts okay mm-hmm. We lose track sometimes, but <laughs> it's a lot of them. There's a few that are in college right now, so they're just, we're keeping the relationship alive, so it doesn't stop when you graduate, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're past 18, we are still your big sister because we have entered that contract with each other. So they still call us and ask us about college help and what should they be doing, how they get a work-study job, stuff like that. I had a girl text me at like midnight, like, I'm just up. And I just need somebody to talk to. I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you. <laughs> I'm going to hand over all my young life. Like, I'll be like, I don't sleep. Yes. <laughs> I sleep. Do you realize I need a nap? Like, I have kids. But you know what? That's the difference, though, I think. Because when, like, we as moms, I know for me, I had to change my mentoring mindset. Like, I was like, oh, I could mentor for a long time. And I was like, no, I needed to mentor on a different age level yeah. at some point. Because my life had changed. And so what I was able to offer yeah. Mm. Change. So I think that's a lot. That's why I asked, like, how do you guys handle yeah. it mm-hmm. when they age out? Because yeah. when you grow, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you grow and you're going to expand. And so they need to know that yes. you guys may go in a different direction. Yes. Okay. And that's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. And the infrastructure for that is coming, right? So we're about to graduate college in a year. And we have bigger plans that we can't quite share. But you'll see. I'm going to be following y'all. You Don't should. worry. I'm going to be following y'all. Because I know you guys hang with Nick Wolf. That's my girl. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> on here, too. Yeah. She is on here. Yes. And so it's just amazing to watch you guys. Like, I watched Nick do her thing. And then I was able to hook up with you two guys. And it's just good to see young women in our community, mm-hmm. like, fighting for other young women yes. in our community. And it's not a physical fight. It's a fight of the mind. So often. So let me ask you this. Do you guys get this often? Like, they expect black women to behave a certain type. Away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it irritates her. It's really not fair. Mm-hmm. It's really not fair. But what are you teaching your girls about that? Because I know I get it in the corporate world. Mm-hmm. And so they expect you to act a certain type of way so that they can so that they can have a reaction to yeah. you. What are you going to teach the girls about that? They want you to be quiet. Yeah. They want us to be so quiet. They want us to be like they women. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> this one, I forgot this one. Family, y'all gonna have to. She comes from a Millicent family. But why? How are we teaching our girls to be loud but not uh, physical and abrasive? By being themselves yeah. and to be intelligent. And, yes, and and taking those weeds out. All of those to- all that toxic, ugh, all the energy. It's it's like it's like a spiritual battle too. Yeah. It's not just like a mental thing, but it's a really heavy like spiritual battle because. There are so many, like social media has a lot to do with how these girls think they want to be and Mm -hmm. and what's right. And uh, it's a battle. Yeah. And so how are you working with these girls? And we're teaching them about walking and their purpose. Because ultimately, you guys are still walking. I'm still walking in mine. Mm -hmm. Robin's still walking in hers. What are you teaching them about walking and their purpose and how to determine what their purpose is? Yeah. So like she said, it's a battle. So we're, we're getting them prepared, right? So every day is training. Every single day is training. So every day you're waking up, you're setting your intention. You're thinking, who am I today, right? Am I the same person I was yesterday? Do I I'm, I want to grow, right? That's the thing that we're constantly instilling in them because they're flowers, right? So what makes me grow? What makes me get to my purpose? What makes me um, keep that in, in mind, keep that tunnel vision, right? So we're constantly training them on what they need specifically because what I need may not be what my sister needs right Mm -hmm. what she needs might not be for me right there may be things that we have in common but everything is not for everybody right so I'm glad you know that because so so often we think that we're supposed to have everything that everybody else Mm -hmm. has but if you stay in the game Mm -hmm. long enough you will know that whatever is meant for you is meant for you it's not meant for anybody else now we all know that when it comes to girls at some point boys are come come on now (laughs) We just watched a video of oh all my that. Oh, gosh. Come into play. Mm-hmm. How are you guys dealing with it when boys come into play? Like, how? what are you teaching them about boys and about how to deal with them? What What quarter of the curriculum is that? Is it a part yet? That's all of them. That's, that's <laughs> in every single one. Because it's always... So, during our sessions, we also have open time where we just talk about any and everything. It's not... It's, we're not quite into the lesson of the day yet. Um, so that's always somebody talking to some little boy, somebody running in behind some little boy. And a lot of our conversation is just, what is he giving to you? Mm-hmm. What are y'all giving to each other? What's the reciprocation? Boyfriend. What does like, that even mean? <laughs> like, what's good? Do y'all really understand what that means? I didn't know what a boyfriend was supposed to be when I was in, <laughs> like, two years ago. Like... <laughs> Who even knew? Mm-hmm. Right? I'm glad you can admit that, though, because all too often we see, we see what we think relationships are supposed to be. And so we take that and we run with yeah. it. And we don't really learn yeah. ourselves enough to go into a relationship That's it. with another person. You have to be a whole human That's before powerful. you can be with another human. Mm-hmm. You have to. As if you're not, what are y'all? Y'all running in circles behind each other and bringing each other down. They on your ankle. <laughs> Twin. I just said, she said that yesterday. Like, they will be are. dragging on you. And you don't need that. Especially, mm-hmm. like, you 15. If I can cut out every boy I ever talked to before I turn 18, I would. I promise I would. Because, like, <laughs> what did we even, like, what were we what even talking even about? Do? Like, <laughs> like what was it? Yeah. And and you know what? They don't do anything but hold hands and no. take pictures. That's all they do. I've seen it. Yes. I seen a girl yo, this literally blew my <laughs> mind. Um what is it? L O M L F something. It's a, you know what I'm talking about? And I seen one of our girls, she made like this video with this this like wedding song. And oh, I'm like, what is this L O I'm like, what does this mean? And I put it together. Love of my life. Oh, you ain't Lord. even left. What? <laughs> Sorry, but I don't feel sorry for over there, but I was like, uh, I we, can imagine that y'all really get on and stay on they. We don't be playing. We text parents. We text parents. Because we text we've been through yesterday. experiences. There's no games out here. We did. It's just like, we are in preparation. There's no, 
I don't think people really understand. It's a war right now. Mm -hmm. It is a war mm -hmm. right now on black women specifically. There's nobody out here helping us. If nobody is out here helping us, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Right? We conscious enough to have these thoughts. Why would we hold it in and make our lives amazing? Mm -hmm. But nobody else. All right, so now I got a question for you because you said it's black women out here. <laughs> what are you doing them. about teaching them about helping each other? Because all too often, you know, we grew up with that crabs in the mm -hmm. barrel mentality. What are you teaching the girls about helping each other? We sisters. What does being a sister mean? We have them look it up in the dictionary. We mm -hmm. have them see it in their lives. Like, you a sister. You're a sister to me. You're a sister to her. You're a sister to your mom. Even though that's your mother, that's your sister, right? Mm -hmm. That's your duty yes. to take care of them. You have it's, responsibility. Yes. All right, so I need y'all to go in all the schools. Come on I need y'all to form a little all-female mm -hmm. school and start pouring this. Oh, honey. Listen, it's coming. Ooh. It's coming. Just wait. It's Just coming. Just I, wait. I think we don't learn that. We yeah. don't learn that. And then you learn it too late you learn yeah. that after you've ruined relationships mm -hmm. you learned it after you've done somebody dirty and mm -hmm. you don't know how to go back we haven't we mm -hmm. haven't been taught how to deal with each other in relationships and so that's when we get that i think we climb on top of yeah. each other and get that crab in the barrel mentality so mm -hmm. it's good to know that you guys are teaching them what sisterhood is and i mean by being around in the environment with the both of you you're also showing them yes what sisterhood yes. is so i'm really proud of the both of y'all thank you so here's another question for you guys what three tips can you give to a parent whose daughter is showing like just lack of no self-esteem uh who's out here on social media being somebody that she's not what three parent what three tips can you give to that parent to help them talk to their daughter about being a better person encouraging and inspiring them mm. we uh, have we've had a friend we've we've had a friend our age Mm -hmm. um, do things that didn't do things mm -hmm. on social media that did not reflect who they were, who she was. Mm. Right. So that's really tough. But for parents, it's important to make sure that you have that the, 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 it's a sacred space. Your relationship is sacred and it's a judgment free zone. Yeah. If you are if you're yelling at me yeah. when I do something that results in something I didn't expect it to, it's because I didn't know. Yeah. So the I have to they feel. Take it away. No, and you know what? What it's gonna do is make me feel uncomfortable to talk to you. Which and means I won't do it. I'm not gonna talk to you. What What would I talk to you for? Because you're just gonna yell. <laughs> for <laughs> real. Oh. <laughs> yes. I'll just be. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of the things that we did before this time where we're able to speak consciously about it mm -hmm. was because we were acting from the place where we want the girls not to act from mm -hmm. right so my i do come from a militant family like my parents do not play no games yeah, I met your mama. yeah <laughs> they don't play no games and we in the same boat yes we're no in the games same at boat. all but their instinct right is to yell right because that's how they learned and that's how they got back on their course but i'm a different individual mm -hmm. right i don't like when people i don't like authority like that mm -hmm. that's just not how i work right but we've come to this place where we're able to talk to each other actually like have a conversation so that's one of the things we would tell parents is have an actual conversation with your person at the place that they are at right oh i'm so glad you mm -hmm. said that yes because yeah, oftentimes we don't talk to people where they're at because yeah. we mm -hmm. don't we sometimes we don't understand yeah. that everybody doesn't understand or vibrate on the same yes. level not only that we think too highly of ourselves sometimes mm -hmm. we think way we think we too highly mm -hmm. we don't and you don't recognize that you're still learning mm -hmm. like all of this is still a learning process mm -hmm. i'm still learning rob is still learning you guys are still learning all of this is still a learning process. And the mm -hmm. moment that you think that you don't have anything left to learn is when you show how stupid you really mm -hmm. are. And that's the honest. Like, at least that's how I feel mm -hmm. about it. No, that's that it. the moment that I say I can't learn anything else, mm -hmm. that's like one of the dumbest statements. You, you a wise make. fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a wise fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, what other projects are you guys working on? Because you guys have a lot going on. So, what are you guys working on? What well, can we know? Because y'all keeping secrets. What can we know? <laughs> we are facilitators tomorrow yes. at the Girls Health Summit. Yes. Which is going to be at the Cleveland Public Auditorium. 
Yes. Beginning like, at 8.30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. It's, we, this was our first <clears throat> time going into the Cleveland Public Auditorium. First of all, I never heard of this place before. Okay. Mm-hmm. We both from Cleveland. Never <laughs> heard of this place before. <laughs> never paying attention that it's right there. It's we go inside this huge. place. It's beautiful and huge. Mm-hmm. We walked into like this. Was it like a, a opera theater looking thing? It looked thing? like it looked like oh my something goodness. from New York. Like <laughs> the Apollo Theater is exactly huge. what it looked like. It was it was huge. colorful. So we'll be there oh, yeah. tomorrow. Um, it's free. Yes. What is it about? What are we going to be talking about? Steps so, to speak your truth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Speaking your truth is the thing. Yes. After I signed up to go and didn't realize it was for yes. <laughs> No, but you, you can come. come. There are actually workshops for, for parents. parents. Oh, there are? Yes. 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 Everyone. For parents, mentors, counselors. Everyone. Yeah, there's something for everyone. It's yes. completely free. Food yes. is going to be provided. DJ. All, it's a, it's a there's huge like a talent show. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm super excited because that's true. I was like, I'm going. Then I was like, oh, what's it? Kids. Yes. <laughs> so no. I wonder if I can still go. You can yes. go. Mm-hmm. So it, it starts at 830. Um, and then the ending festivities begin at 230. So it should be over about 330. Oh, and it's at the cool. Cleveland Public Auditorium downtown. So you guys join them if you're listening right now. Please. Join them tomorrow. That's a super dope event. Please. To talk to girls about their health and whatever yes. else they'll have going on. Health and, and to wellness. And have those, um, those conversations available for parents. Yes. Because Often, two times, we as parents think we know the way to parent. Yeah. And I always tell another parent, like, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Like, none of us do. Yeah. We haven't experienced like, being a parent your new journey. each day. Yes. You know? So, there's no manual. So, yes. you guys know this. Like, yes. your mom didn't leave a house. Of course. Again, you know, so, <laughs> there's no manual to tell us how to do this. So, we have to take every opportunity to learn. Yes. To enrich our lives so that we can help and pour into you guys. So are those the only products you have to have going on that you're going to announce? Yes. <laughs> anything we can't tell you. Anything everything. else? You can go to our Instagram page. You can go to our Facebook page. We I'm are very active. That in a minute, look. Yes. We can't tell you. We're going to New Orleans. Yes. Right? yes. <laughs> we are. I got somebody I want y'all to meet. I'm Beyonce. Excited. <laughs> No, we're gonna meet Beyonce by by the end. We of already let her know. It's no, a we, speaking into it. Yes, Honey. let me yes. tell y'all that really works. Everybody, mm-hmm. I don't care what y'all say. When I said I was gonna meet Anthony Hamilton, I have been saying it for a long mm-hmm. time. And then I met him. I, I saw the like, picture. See? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you got to speak what you want to do into really? existence. Yes. You have to have a firm mm-hmm. belief. Like everybody, I was listening. Um, So you guys go check out Maddie James. That's my new like favorite crush blogger girl. And she was just talking about speaking affirmations over your life. And she announced today that every day this year she spoke that she was going to pay off all her debt. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily her house, but all her debt. She said today she officially had paid off all her debt. See what happens when you speak stuff That's into your life. Yes. And see what happens when other people speak so what you guys are doing is speaking stuff into these young ladies yeah. like and just think of what's going to happen mm-hmm. when you're sitting back later on yeah. 40 years old which is not old <laughs> <laughs> and looking back on these young ladies mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. to see what you know to see what happens with them you may have some pediatricians yes. you may have an activist mm-hmm. you may have somebody crocheting because the rest of us can't we <laughs> even do, do that in our lives yeah. like mm-hmm. think about it like 2015 we were walking into our first year of college and we like had a mission we're like we're going to have this expo like i don't know how hard it's gonna be but we're gonna do it and now we're still in college and next year is gonna be our fifth year anniversary Mm -hmm. and we go to school every day honey we go to school too we go to school every every day day. it's hard (laughs) Like, if we want to graduate, we got homework, we got papers, we have so... And then, on top of that, we have to be the best that we can for them. Yes. Jediah is on here. Hi. Hey, you girl. You have any social life. I'm sure people of are course. curious. Like, I know you do. Honey! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course. All right, so tell the people how we can connect with you. Drop all your information. <laughs> all right. You can find us on Instagram. At beautiful C L E. That is B E Y O U T I F U L C L E. And we're on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have a website up yet? Or no? That's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. See, she mm-hmm. could announce that, y'all. <laughs> it's coming. I, these, I just want to thank you guys for coming mm-hmm. on today and being such an inspiration and encouragement. You don't realize that sometimes us, oh, uh, 
more mature women mm-hmm. need to have a fire lit underneath us mm-hmm. to say like we need to get back out there that we need to do more in the community mm-hmm. that you guys are relying on us to pour into you so that you can pour into somebody yeah. else because ultimately at the end of the day it trickles down yeah. so you guys still need to see black women oh we need that course. yes and you also need to see that we can pour back into you that mm-hmm. it's not I'm doing my thing and I can't mm-hmm. help you it's I'm doing my thing and I'm going to help you yes. make sure you're doing your we thing we need that thank so you so I'm just excited yeah that you guys are in the community doing that and I just know that in the future I'm going to be watching I'm going to be like those are my babies yes. <laughs> thank you hey hotties I just want to thank you guys for tuning in this was an amazing session they have put a call to action for black mm-hmm. women they have put a call to action out there for you they need you to come alongside them mm-hmm. if you can't volunteer at least be praying for them mm-hmm. Be praying into them so they are able to keep their cups filled and pour into someone else. You know that you can find me and the hottest kids on all my social media <laughs> at Just One Hot Mom. Go on on over to the blog where we will be living our best life. Yes. Yes. Fire that flavor, that heat. Ooh. All things saucy from around the world and in your neighborhood at JustOneHotMom.com. Guess what, hotties? You've been tuned in and you've been elevated. Talk to you soon.